Hi, I'm Josh from Simple Thought Productions, and recently I shared a post on how I do replay with the TriCaster TC1, and I got a lot of questions asking me uh, to show the workflow uh, so people could better understand how I do all this uh, from a single surface and do it as an operator. So uh, right now uh, we're looking at the interface. We have three previously recorded clips uh, coming into the system that are being recorded on the ISO quarter. We have graphics coming in over NDI. Uh, that is relevant because we use New Blue Tyler Live 4 to send the graphics to the system, which allows us to use macros to animate the graphics on and off, as you can see there. And that is part of our macro workflow for replays. That way I don't have to think about selecting DSK1 to come off in the next transition or any of that other stuff. And then more importantly, by doing that, we can use the animations we built into New Blue Tyler Live. Uh, versus just using a fade or the transitions that come with the TriCaster. That would work perfectly fine as well, and it would be easy to implement into the macros, but we want to do the fancy animations versus just fading on and off. So uh, first up, let's take a look at the control surface uh, and how this is set up. So basically switching normal, and when we get to a point in the show when we want to do a replay or execute the macros, if we hold down the macro button, the surface lights up telling you which buttons have macros assigned to them. And the way we've broken this out is that on program row one through four, we can request a, the ISO recorder chop, which basically will grab the last X number of seconds that are configured uh, from that particular recorder. So cameras, you know, one, two, three, four, or four might be program uh, recording wise. And this will allow me to grab a replay of that particular item uh, and add it to DDR1, or I'm sorry, DDR2. On the preview row, Input one, if I press that for macro, will tell the system to replay the current clip in full screen, which is pretty straightforward. Input on preview row three, uh, this will do a ME replay where we do a picture in picture so that we can show the replay as well as what's live. The what's live is set to follow uh, the blue uh, input, which is set on the main switcher as my preview row. So once we're into the ME replay, if I let go, I can then change the pre uh, preview row and that will update the live feed inside the DSK without me having to do anything crazy. So it's really, really easy to continue switching the show and then it animates out to whatever the heck was last on preview. So it's a very slick uh, use case there. Finally, if uh, we get a goal or something we know we're gonna wanna talk about at halftime or at the end of the show highlights, we press uh, preview eight and that will copy it into the melt reel uh, bin. And then ME2 and black will basically add two seconds to the beginning or end of a clip. DSK row is all about graphics, so uh, one and two are gonna control our main uh, intro slide as well as our uh, scoreboard. And then finally, four and five do some other commonly used graphics. The tagging comes in on the uh, ME stripe. So basically B is going to assign tags. And again, these tags can be anything and I change them. I use session macros, so they're specific to the session. So I have a session for soccer, volleyball, et cetera. So on soccer, this is set to be goals, blocks, foul, fouls, and fouls with cards. And then the A row is a mirror of this and it's just to select. So if I hit one on the A row, it's telling the system, please select all the clips currently in the DDR bin that are tagged with saves, uh, or rather goals, et cetera. And we go from there. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at doing some of these clips. So if I'm coming through here again, I got uh, two different events going on, uh, two different soccer games and a volleyball. So let's go ahead and take a replay out of input number two. So if I hit macro and two, I now have a clip says replay two and the number particular clip at the time. Uh, and that's up in my preview row, uh, so I can see it. I could hit play uh, really quick uh, just to take a look to see if it's something I want to utilize. Uh, and if it is, great. If not, uh, I could delete it or you know decide maybe I just want to save it for later uh, and tag it appropriately. So let's go ahead and see what happens in this particular play real quick. And it was a miss. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab it though inside of replay one and we'll add that. So we'll call this one a particular block and sure enough on my actual preview row, you can see uh, on my program, you can see in our particular show, we did actually replay at that particular time. 
from one of the different angles that we don't have anymore. But uh, now that we've done this, uh, we can go ahead and hit macro and let's go ahead and do a full screen replay so we can see the graphics animate off. We do a different transition selection and now we're playing back the last eight seconds and when we're done here, uh, we'll see we do a transition again and we animate the graphics back on and it's done. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now let's go ahead and do one real quick where we do the picture in picture. So graphics animate off, plays back, comes up with this. So now I can continue to select what I want in the preview row and we come up live. Now that one uh, plays a little bit different because I actually am doing a replay on that particular one. That's what it should look like. So let me go ahead and do that one one more time just so it doesn't get confusing. Uh, so animate off plays, we can select the pip to be whatever the heck we want it to be. And then when it's done playing, we go full screen and cut to this particular source. So it works out very nicely and the graphics come back. The graphics coming back are based on the fact that everything, uh, all my replays are done inside of DDR2. So I have a macro set on DDR2 that basically says when you lose program tally, uh, execute, bring graphics back. Uh, that way if it's inside the ME or it's actually on program, either way when the, ME, when the DDR2 is done playing a highlight effectively, it will tell the system to animate the graphics for the scoreboard back on. That way I don't even have to think about it. Now. We got a couple replays here. Uh, so this particular one, we're going to call this a goal, even though it wasn't. So we're gonna tag it with the goal and we see it updates the name to say goal. Now the TriCaster system, best as I know, does not show tags. So I go ahead and change the name in the comment to say goal, just because it makes it easier to know I have successfully tagged it. And visually I can see really quickly, oh, that's the goal clip. Uh, generally speaking in soccer, for example, there's not too many goals, so that's helpful. This one, the original one we told, we're gonna go ahead and call that a block. And then let's go ahead and grab a couple more replays. And we got one from there, we got one from there, and one more here. So uh, now that we've done a couple more, I'm going to say you were a foul with a card. So basically as the game's going on, usually you're not firing off this many replays. Uh, it's a little bit more controlled than this. But as you're doing this, you're able to tell the system basically why you're doing the replays and everything, you can actually keep up with this type of tagging and say, okay, that was a goal, that was this. And again, this is not the same as having a dedicated replay technician uh, who can go in and then perfectly trim down the clips. Right now, this is based off of taking the last eight seconds, which is usually pretty good. If you need to, you can scrub around and set new endpoints and out points and all that stuff. And sometimes we'll do that uh, for the mount reel to just really get it perfect. But generally speaking for doing the show, this works out well. Um, and one of the things that we do utilize with our camera operators is, uh, since I'm switching this show and doing all these things, uh, the cam ops will often call out on intercom, like, uh, camera one got that, you know, obviously being the uh, primary shot or on the si case of the sides, uh, they can say, yeah, two, three got that. And that lets me know really quick. Okay. I can call for a replay from two and I don't even have to necessarily think about it. Uh, so that's a really great way to kind of help with those particular things. So. Now that we've uh, tagged a couple of uh, highlights during this particular half, uh, let's look at the selection. So in this particular case, there's not that many clips, but by the end of a half, we might have 15, 20 replays. So there's quite a bit in there. So if I hit macro and select one on the A row, that's basically telling it to go get all the goals, which sure enough, it highlights the two clips. You can see they got the selection box to let me know that it's got the goals. And same if I say, please give me the blocks, uh, we see it update and select uh, the blocks. Uh, there we go, sorry. So these will now select block uh, on these particular two. And then again, as we're going through, if I have something I wanna keep, so goals would be a great example, fouls with cards, et cetera. As I'm doing those uh, replays and watching them, again, this is kinda as you work is how you wanna handle this. I'll hit macro and eight, and we'll see it bump for a second. And effectively what's happening there is it jumps to our highlight bin, uh, which we call it event highlights, but this is effectively our melt reel, and it puts whatever clip I had highlighted, it'll put it into the system. It'll then also add a fade transition automatically, and basically that builds up a melt reel with fades in the middle. You could obviously change this out to be whatever particular uh, 
transition you wanted, in my particular case, fades work out pretty well. And you can adjust the speed or any of that other fun stuff you need. Um, now, once you're done with this, the whole idea that I have here is I keep this, the, repl the first bin is for the scratch pad of whatever we're currently actively working with. At the end of the first half, uh, we're done. Uh, we don't need to look at these particular ones anymore. We've already selected to the mount reel the ones we wanted, and now we want to have a fresh start. So um, for soccer, you've got first half, second half, and then maybe you have an overtime or two. Uh, in college soccer and NCAA, it's two 10-minute halves, uh, golden goal, but if somebody scores in the first half, that's the end of it. And if it's a tournament, they may go to a uh, shootout. Uh, so that would be the fifth. And then also for volleyball, for example, five sets. So I utilize the ME delegate row. So if I go ahead and hit one on this, I see all of those clear out from DDR2. But if I come down into group one, all of the highlights that I did are there. They still have their tags and everything we need. And the ones that I put inside of the actual uh, melt reel are still there. And then finally, the scratch bin is empty. So let's go ahead and get one more highlight here real quick. And we like that one. We're going to call it a block because it's volleyball. And we want to keep that. So once again, we did a quick uh, keep with uh, number eight. And if I go into the highlight reel, I can see that I've now got another clip added in. So this is how we basically do the replays, do the tagging. Like I said, it's nice to be able to have all those tags in there and quickly select as you get to more and more uh, shots. It's nice to be able to just quickly grab them out and uh, have those clips named automatically and uh, pull them out. Obviously, if you dump everything to the mount reel as you're going, the tags aren't quite as important, but we still get requests at times where uh, the uh, SID might say, hey, you know, our goalie had a really good night. We want to get some particular uh, blocks. And now I can just simply, that may not have been something we put into the mount reel, but uh, we now go back and say, hey, get all the blocks from the first half, get all the blocks from the second half and build a secondary melt and send that out really, really quick without having to go through and look at each clip and figure it all out. Uh, so again, you know, it's really nice to be able to do that. Basketball, you can tag the three pointers and other fun stuff. Even if you're not showing them on program, you could all be pulling these clips out. Uh, another example of that is with swimming. Uh, we have, uh, you know, swimming we don't use replay on, uh, generally speaking, but uh, our coaches do love to go over game, the swim meet footage with the particular swimmers. Uh, they only care about the top view that's wide. Uh, so in that particular case, we do a recording of one of the uh, Emmys uh, where we only have that wide shot with the score clock and we use the macro in a similar way to basically say, uh, mark the beginning of an event where it drops a clip but clears the out point. And then finally we have a secondary macro which will then set the end point to the current time. So in other words, we can, right before the swim meets, uh, the session or the event starts, we hit a button. And when the event finishes, the last person touches the wall, we hit another button and that will then quote unquote finalize the clip. We then, you know, automatically export that to an MP4 uh, using the export feature. And at the end of the meet, we now have every single event in its own isolated recording, uh, effectively using this replay engine, if you will, and we can name them. Uh, we can pull in variable information from like Sport Zcast and name things automatically. It's very, very cool what you can do with the macros and the overall system. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of how we do this particular workflow in the TriCaster. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any suggestions or thoughts, comments, or otherwise, feel free to send them out. We're always looking to improve and adapt, and we appreciate your time. Thank you.